This is an episode of Reasonably Sound Classic. For the first 30-some episodes, this podcast was distributed by Infinite Guest, American Public Media's podcast network. Thus, it benefited from blanket broadcast licenses held with every music publisher. After going independent, pretty much all intro, outro, and interstitial music had to be removed. The intro and outro music you're going to hear is an in-progress version of Reasonably Sound's theme, written by Will Stratton. The awkward silences are where act break music used to be, so if you could just imagine like Queen or the Misfits or Kate Bush along the way, that would be great. If you want to support Reasonably Sound in the hopes that maybe one day I'll be able to afford some blanket licenses of my own, you can check out the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash reasonably sound. Okay, on with the show. Over the last 10 days, me and Molly went on a road trip. We left Brooklyn and drove to Columbus, Ohio, and from there we went to Louisville, Kentucky, and then Nashville, Tennessee. We then went to Harrisonburg, Virginia, which is the home of James Madison University, and then stopped in Philly for a night before coming home. And on the way home, we talked about one of the things that we did to entertain ourselves while driving, sometimes for nine hours at a stretch when we weren't listening to the pop culture happy hour podcast from npr which we can't recommend highly enough or reading to one another um from books that you cannot get on audiobook which i know is like the nerdiest thing that you could think of but it's it's really fun if you go on a lot of road trips i highly recommend reading to the people that you are on the road trip with um anyways when we weren't doing those things uh, we were engaged in listening projects that were made possible entirely by Spotify, which is, as a lot of people probably know, an app and a service that I have no shortage of problems with, which I talk about uh, with Molly. So I'm just going to I'm going to stop yammering. I'm going to stop introducing this too much and I'm just going to get right to it. Here is us in the car talking about what we did on our road trip. So, first things first, congratulations on being the first, second time guest on Reasonably Sound. Thank you. It's quite an honor. Yeah. Um, I feel like we should explain a little bit why it sounds weird, which is that we're recording in a car, because... We just drove uh, to Nashville, and we're on our way back from Philadelphia, currently uh, driving into New York. Beautiful I-95. Beautiful I-95 in New Jersey. We're driving by the Joyce Kilmer service area. <laughs> um, one of the things that we've been doing on this road trip, which we've been on now for eight days, yeah. we're about to, and we're about to get home, uh, is we have made extensive use of Spotify, which you just you just started using, right? Yeah, I I signed up for Spotify about a year and a half ago when it was my intern's last day. And we were throwing a little goodbye party for her, and I wanted to play the Frozen soundtrack, but I did not want to buy it. I think that's a very valiant reason to sign up for Spotify. So you actually, you pay the money that makes it so that you're not listening to advertisements. Is that... I, I just started paying the money, I think. I don't really remember doing it, but I must have done it. But you... you can pay for it through your app, the, the uh, Apple Store. Yeah. I think that's how I did it. Which I did because... I asked my friend to get me her running playlist, like mix. Master round now available. Nope. Save seven minutes. Save seven Except to switch rounds. Save seven minutes. Except. Uh, you, uh, the, yeah, we might get interrupted by Charlene to giving us directions every once in a while. Yeah. I started paying the money because it said that I could get music offline. I still don't really understand what that means because Spotify doesn't seem to work when you're offline. <laughs> but I agreed to it at some point. So that, I was going to ask what inspired you to continue paying for Spotify after the very specific use case of the intern wants to listen to Frozen. I didn't pay for it then. Okay. Well, I just downloaded it and was using it for free for that day. And you were inspired to continue using it and paying for it because you wanted to listen to music like on the subway? I didn't use it for like a year. Oh, okay. I just downloaded it for that one day. So my Spotify account was like, let it go times 20. <laughs> <laughs> and, my, and like, I realized... 
recently that my friends on Facebook can like find me and see what I've been listening to, so they must think I'm crazy. Just the Frozen soundtrack. <laughs> the, that's it. Yeah, it's like Molly really likes this. Um, but no, I started listening to it recently because Mexo gave me her running playlist, and I was like, you didn't give it to me. You said you would. She's like, yeah, I did. Oh, I gave it to you on Spotify. Okay. And I mine was blown because she like could listen to all this music while she was running, and I was like, I don't know what to listen to. Because I'm always, I'm relatively anti-Spotify just because of the economics of it. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not a great way to support the musicians that you like, even though sometimes it feels like it is. And this is something that I talked about in another episode, so I won't get into it. And I agree but, with you. Yeah. And I think, and we talked about how it, we both think it would be nice or maybe interesting if Spotify were to say every once in a while, it's like, oh, you've listened to Pony a hundred times over the last three days, which is something we're going to talk about in a little bit, um, because we have. You know, do, ha, would you consider donating $5 to Genuine? Speaking of which, <laughs> I'm going to go and buy Pony on the iTunes store. Right now. Right now. Um, and so I have remained um, really hesitant to get into Spotify because... I generally only listen to music that I want to own. Uh, I don't really have a, like, I don't really listen to playlists. Um, and I don't really like streaming things. But this road trip, we have been using Spotify extensively um, to listen to all kinds of stuff. And it's been really great. I've had a good time. I mean, I like playlists, though. I like shuffle. <laughs> what is it about what is it about shuffle that you prefer? I like being surprised by the next track. I don't and I'm I mean, you know, I don't care about so we just saying? I like music, everyone likes music, but I don't like music in the way that I am a fan of other things. Yeah. Like I'm a fan of one or two musicians and I'll buy absolutely everything, but that's like Taylor Swift and Jenny Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll, I'll I'll buy things that I've always liked. Like, I own Let Me Blow Your Mind by Eve with Gwen Stefani <laughs> because I love that song. Because you identify with it so much that you want to have some ownership over it. Yeah, but I don't need the album. Like, yeah. Sometimes I just want to listen to Let Me Blow Your Mind. That's fair. That's <laughs> totally fair. Okay. Uh, and now I will do the same with Pony. Yeah, I mean, I think it's been really interesting to be driving for sometimes nine hours at a stretch and have an idea of a record that you want to listen to that Instantly. and you yeah and and we even went through a couple uh mile you know multiple mile stretches where i was trying to challenge spotify to find things that i would never expect it to have and which the last time i checked which was maybe a year and a half ago it didn't have but it has it, it seems like the library has grown extensively over the last several years and then it has things like biosphere and richard skelton and people who i would never expect yeah. to be on there the traveling wilburys is the first thing i've looked up where i can't find the music and and so i think that it's it, you know now having used spotify on a road trip i don't think that i will pay to subscribe and i don't think i will use it regularly but i do think the next time we go on a road trip or the next time I go on a long drive, if you're not with me, I will I will pay for Spotify for a month or whatever yeah. to, to be able to do that kind of thing again. It was really great. Yeah. And just for the record, they're not paying me to say this at all whatsoever. I am so resistant to Spotify that I just feel like I need to publicly admit my surprise. Yeah. I like a lot about the Spotify app more than the, on the own mobile, than I do the Spotify app on my computer. Yeah. And I never even, considered listening to it on my phone. I don't really listen to music on the subway. I usually read or like people watch or play the Nico Atsume cat game. Yeah, the cat game is a big part of our lives. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but, but, um, so yeah, I associate Spotify with like listening at my desk on my computer and I really hate when people listen to music when they're at work because I think of work as a like collaborative atmosphere where I want to talk to my coworkers and like... Oh, you're one of those people, huh? Not all day. Do you get mad if people wear their headphones while they're working? I don't get mad. I just, like, I don't want to bother them. Okay. And, but I also think, like, we're here to work together. Okay. So... It's true. I mean, you do also work in a very collaborative company in a very collaborative situation. So I can understand. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, and we're, like, all looking at things on the internet all day. So when I know that someone's listening to music, I'm like, I want to 
wanted to share this thing I just had an idea about with you immediately. Right. right. And now I feel like a pain in the butt because you had to pull your headphones out and because you're listening to Spotify. Right. I was um, at a party recently where the DJ was DJing from Spotify and he had his playlist up on the projector. Like, the party projection was the playlist Spotify, uh, the Spotify playlist that the DJ was building as the party was happening. And I was talking with a, a bunch of people there about how that is such a bold move. I have, uh, I, I realized, I was just thinking about my previous experiences with Spotify Well, you and I were just silence for the last like five minutes since me and Johnny Mitchell um and I remember about two years ago Andrea showed me my friend Andrea showed me music for horses <laughs> and like music for dogs and like I know about music for dogs yes yeah yes there and is. it's and it has a lot of uh super audio frequencies that people can't hear it was mostly like bird sounds and like buckets and the wind and <laughs> The sound. The sound all forces a lot. The sound of uh, the kibble box, uh, like jingling with with kibble inside of it. I don't know. Yeah, but I've listened to that before on Spotify. So, so it sounds like what we should do is throw a party uh, in in a party van on a road trip, where we project the Spotify playlist that the DJ is building, and it should include, amongst things like. Uh, Joni Mitchell and Pony, uh, music for dogs. I don't know if that's a good idea. I was gonna say the other things I like about Spotify because you know, you're not gonna use it. That, back to the why I like the mobile app. Yeah. You can find playlists and it curates the playlists based on what time of day it is and what day of the week it is. Whoa, that's some like Raga level stuff right there. That's great. I don't know. Like I, I'm sure it's not that complicated. Yeah. But you know, it's probably no more complicated iTunes, but it's it's like it's Sunday afternoon chill session, <laughs> um, and I think it's curating them to me based on what I like. It's like, oh, here's your indie folks in the afternoon. Right. You probably want to listen to Connor Oberst right now. Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, and then it has playlists based on music genres and moods uh, that you can just click onto, and then it has like all the curated ones from all the people I might follow on Spotify or people who. You know, build right. playlists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can go to like workout and then find cardio versus like I don't know, like hit workout versus dance. Yeah. Versus yoga, right? Yeah. Or I can go to seventies and then find like rock or disco or anyway. Which and I think that that and that's that's the next thing that I want to talk about is using Spotify for discovery in that way and also to fill in gaps in your musical knowledge yes. because one of the things that we've been doing on, on this road trip during the uh, nearly 2,000 miles at this point 1,992.9 miles uh, we have driven um, we have been we have taken on several listening projects where we talk about an artist or band that we've never listened to a full record by and then we listen to a full record by them uh, and I think sometimes it was the most popular one sometimes it was the one that had the largest number of singles sometimes it was just the first sometimes it was the latest yeah. so there was no rhyme or reason to it um, but the first thing I'm really curious about is we listened to what did we listen to it was like the Almond Brothers yeah which I had never listened to a full Almond Brothers record um, NWA uh, what else? Sun Ra. Sun Ra. Jethro Tull. Jethro Tull was the first one. Yep. Steely Dan. Steely, <laughs> Steely Dan. Cars. Yep, the Cars, which I had realized after listening to it that so many songs that I know all of the words to are by the Cars, and I just didn't know that. Yeah, it's which shocking. Makes I makes me feel stupid, but whatever. Um, Step number one: admit your ignorance. Ellie Goulding, which was hard to get through. We didn't finish every listening project that we started. Um, Grimes. Yep. But as far as the older stuff, the, the things like the Cars and the Allman Brothers, they're things that I never listened to, I think because I had such strong associations with the kinds of people that listen to those things. 
Okay. That they are like the kind. It's like I mean, I just I think about people who I went to high school with who wore Almond Brothers T-shirts, and they were not people who I identified as my friends. And so I think that I put the Allman Brothers in this box that was like, well, if I don't like these people, then I probably won't like the Allman Brothers. It's really interesting that you rejected music based upon the people around you in real life. Whereas, like, when I was, I'm five years younger than you, yeah. and when I was in school, not that, like, the, the music that we were identifying ourselves by in my friend group were, like, Death Cab for Cutie and, like, Blink-182, and pretty much everybody liked everything. And the weirder stuff, which was, like, Screamo or, you know, some of the, like, some of the emo we listened to. Yeah. Like, yeah, we wore t-shirts, but I don't think it was isolating or, you know, it wasn't popular enough that the other people at my school would be like, well, I don't like that because of who you are. And they'd be like, I don't know what that is. Right. Um, and, like, music listening was super different. Because, like, I had a more similar experience to I do with Spotify when I was discovering music on LimeWire and, like, LiveJournal. Right, so, like, I was discovering music entirely by people yeah. who were telling me about things or friends who would just buy me tickets to shows. Like, I remember my friend Mara bought me just, like, she just bought me an OzFest ticket. was, I think, the second or first concert that I ever went to. She was just like, hey, we're gonna let's, let's go to this thing. Um, My entire music discovery is internet or MTV2. <laughs> or like Kerrang! Okay. in the UK. Uh, fair. I did watch a lot of MTV when I was younger. I, I watched so much Matt Pinfield uh, hosting 120 Minutes, which was the like rock and roll show. I never would have found out. That's not true. I would have the Eve, let me blow your mind. <laughs> with an <laughs> internet, on, an internet discovery. No, no, no. It was on MTV constantly. That's something I never would have found on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> and I've carried that song all these years. But so now it's it's been really interesting to get past the point in my life where I I am not confident in myself enough to listen to music that I identify with other other groups of people to then to be able to listen to that music. I'm now confident enough with who I am that I can listen to the Almond Brothers and not feel like it's going to change how people think of me. Do you think it's that, or do you think it's that Spotify gave us such a low-risk situation that you could try it? Uh, no, because I think the low-risk situation exists exterior to Spotify, because I could just go to I could just go to some torrent, torrent site and download anything I want. That's so much work. But I'm also not, I'm also not, I mean, when we were listening to, so one of the listening projects that we did a couple months ago, just while driving around Brooklyn, running errands over the course of a couple weeks was I listened to most but not all of the studio catalog of the Grateful Dead and I paid for that like I bought that I have that but I mean it's fine like whatever I'm fine paying for it I, I'm it, if I'm gonna consume it and I'm gonna learn something from it which I which I absolutely positively will if only the thing if if, if only the thing that I'm learning is being able to relate to people who really like the Grateful Dead, then I'm perfectly fine paying for it. I don't, I don't think of, and this is probably due to the fact that I don't like music, but like, in the same You're, I don't, I don't think, I don't think it's fair to say that you don't like music. I think it's fair to say that you are not a, an avid music listener. I'm not invested in music. Yeah, you, the same you way like music, music. you're just yeah. not, yeah. I don't seek it out actively. Like, music comes to me and I find it through other means, either I used to I used to try and discover it because I wanted to like music and I wanted to like cool music. Yeah. That's why I went down the Lime Wire and the Live Journal and the like classic <laughs> rock roots. But then a lot of the music that I ended up liking came from movies and TV shows. But I think but I think that's that's very much related to my experience not wanting to listen to Steely Dan or Jethro Tull is because when I was doing all of my music discovery, I wanted, when I was younger, I wanted to listen to cool music. And I did not think of the band whose logo is a moppy-haired guy playing the flute as a cool band. And I did not think of the people who I went to school with that listened to that as cool people. Huh. And so I was like, I don't need to listen to that because that's not, that's not cool. Now listening to Jethro Tull, I think Jethro Tull is actually pretty cool. That's I'm I'm shocked at how much I liked Steely Dan. Yeah. So like my, I don't know. I I like 
kind of get crushes on people who I think of as curators. Yeah. Like I, I have had one on Cameron Crowe for years, and Tabby Gibbonson, and this one person on Live Journal, and I love their musical takes and listen to the soundtracks of their things or the playlists they put on their website or like found their. I'm listening to Facebook feeds if they're actually friends of mine, and yeah. I will I will look to those people as opposed to. So like your listening project can be organized by personality and not necessarily by band. No, they're my entry point. They're my entry point to bands. I don't look at people who like things intensely and think that's not for me because you're different than me. I look at people I really like and yeah. I'm like, what do you really like? Yeah. And then I will, you know, go down a. a rabbit hole from there. To be fair, I just want to be really clear that as a as an adult, I do not have the same thing that I had <laughs> when I was a teenager where if I don't like someone and they like something intensely, I decide to not like the thing. That doesn't happen anymore. That's something that I did when I was young and stupid. Now I'm I'm capable of separating people from the things that they like. Yeah, it's just interesting that you're influenced by your idea of people in a negative way. Was. 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 Was influenced. <laughs> Am no longer influenced. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> the other really interesting thing about the listening projects that we were doing is that they feel very removed from the period and time that I associate those things with. Now, I remember when my uncle was listening to NWA when NWA was a thing. Or not that they're not a thing anymore, but when they were a current, current concern and listening to it now, it's a little, it's not like traveling back in time, but it's sort of being able to connect the, the reason for their importance to what made them uh, have the effect that they did to then the outcome of that effect and, uh -huh. and what happened. It's like, Wait, you know, so you're, you're placing the music. Whoa, what a mouthful. I think it's this one with a uh, giant billboard. Bear with us for a moment while we figure out this very complicated... It's this exit. It's not complicated. It's just the Holland Tunnel. Okay. Right? We're going through Manhattan. Uh, is there... Well, but there are a bunch of exits in a row. Yeah, we're going through Holland Tunnel. Okay. It's, a, it's one exit. But what's the... Um, what that is... is the exit. Really? Yes. It says exits, plural. Oh, you're going to the Holland Tunnel and it looks like 14C. So, 14C. Okay. Yeah. Um, what were you saying about NWA? Um, wait, okay, so you're interested in NWA because you want to understand a period of music history. Or not that I, history. not that I want to understand a period of music history, but that, but that NWA is important for musical and cultural reasons. Right. And right. so listening to them is great because they are important and good music. I think all of these listening experiments have been cultural for you, like learning about culture. Well, I think it's also, like, I'm always, you know. I, I, f I feel like I started to irritate you a little bit because I'm driving and you're the one looking at Wikipedia and I'm like, wait, so where are the Allman Brothers from? That's fine. When, when were they born? Give me where, some where, when is this record from? Because it, because it situates the records and the things that we're listening to yeah. very much in a time and place so that I can give it context. Yeah, it's really interesting. But I think, I think that that context felt especially strong for certain records and I think NWA... It's amazing. I think NWA um, explicit was chief amongst them yeah. because it was so clearly from a time when that kind of message needed to be delivered by those people. That was cool for me to hear. That was a, that was cool for me to hear because I'm think I've been thinking about it recently because we just saw the trailer for Straight Outta Compton. Right. Yeah. In a quarter mile, keep right at the fork to continue on exit, exits 14A, 14B, 14C. Follow signs for I-78 East Bayonne, Jersey City, Holland Tunnel. It's never going to get this old. This yellow truck has like four baby trucks. Yeah, this is, it's a truck, truck, and trucks. It's so cute. It's like a little duck, duck mom. Okay, Which one truck. do I do? Holland, Holland Tunnel? 14, Holland Tunnel. Keep right at the fork to continue on exit, exits 14A, 14B, no pizza. 14C. That's fine. not going to stand up. That's okay. Uh, it's been it was interesting for you because we just saw right because the movie is coming out about NWA in like sometime this year right it, like this summer yeah like soon um, 
and I never thought about it. And it's like a part of music history and a part of history that I've never thought about that much. And... Well, and like a huge turning point for hip hop mm -hmm. and is what determined so much of what hip hop was in the 90s and early 2000s. Yeah. Um, it's also, it was also really interesting to hear, um, you know, like Dre be Dre, but in a way that I was not present for, or was present for, but not really conscious. Okay. You know, like the kinds of people that, you know, like everybody who... <laughs> Which one of them is just crazy in every song? Uh, was it, this is going to be terrible, was it Ice, Ice T? Ice Cube? Ice Cube? Bad. That's bad. I should know the difference. Hold on. You can cut this out. No, I'm not gonna cut this out. I should, step yeah, number one. Ice Cube. Admit your ignorance. Ice Cube. Yeah. Yeah. Ice Cube is a is a crazy motherfucker. <laughs> e yeah. Who doesn't give a shit and he will um, put his foot in your ass. Right. To hear Ice Cube. His Wikipedia profile picture is awesome. Is it him with his foot in someone's ass? No. He just, it's just him at like a, a Chicago screening for the film Ride Along. He just looks really great. It's really serious. Uh, to listen to, I mean, you know, Easy e died very young and tragically, so he didn't really achieve the same sort of weird, complex fame that's a little bit the opposite of their original fame that Dre and uh, Ice Cube did. So it was it was really interesting to hear them to hear them. Uh, their lyrics portray a, a, a side of them that I always feel like they are referencing in their current yeah. current state, but well, everyone's but, referencing. but do not embody. Okay. Like I don't I don't think of Ice Cube or or Dr. Dre as like hard on the streets gangsta type guys. I don't know anything about them. Like that's why I can remember they're saying the right name, right? Yeah. Now I'm now I'm in his. <laughs> I immediately went to his Wikipedia page and read personal life information. The rest of the podcast will just be Molly reading Wikipedia aloud. I like that the second piece of information is based on an interview he did on Fresh Air with Terry Gross. <laughs> See, um, that is not that is not street at all. With his actually, Terry, I bet Terry Gross. I bet Terry Gross is pretty tough. He's talking about kids and profanity and like a level of self-respect. This is Dre. Oh, students still no. This is this is Ice Cube. Ice Cube. All, all down the wormhole here. Um, okay, sorry. It's fine. Let's get out of this hole. So listening projects. So and then, and then just generally listening to like classic rock. Right, and then the, the and then and then we also put on a bunch of classic rock playlists and listened to like Phil Collins and you know the last thing that I think is worth talking about is the song that became the unofficial official theme of this road trip, which was. Pony, but Genuine. Genuine's Pony. Which has just been a theme of, like, our lives this year, kind of. <laughs> I don't know if i go that far. It has. Yeah. Every day I hear Pony. Um, oh, I've been thinking about Genuine well, a lot because of Parks and Recreation. What is the, re I don't, what's the relationship there? Oh my god, Donna's cousin is Genuine. It's, like, one of the jokes. Really? Yes. I totally missed that. He's in, I'm pretty sure he's in the finale, if not one of the episodes in the last season. So, I attribute my... I attribute my um, research of interest in Genuine's Pony to uh, the guy, the Vine account, who I'm forgetting his name. It's like to Tony. Tony Dances to Pony, which is just this man that travels around the world and goes to all of these amazing locations, like Turkey and Northern like, Europe, and it. dances, does the pony dance. Very to good at it. Yeah, he's very good at it in these great locations. But it would appear as though the resurgence of, of pony is maybe related to several factors. There's a collusion of events here. Yeah, all that has brought genuine back into our cultural con consciousness <laughs> in a beautiful, beautiful way. Well, I mean, and I forgot, because I, I was definitely watching nonstop MTV when Pony came out. Which okay. must have been the late '90s. I've never heard Pony before this year. Really? No. I think it. I, I may be be invent. I may be inventing this, but I'm pretty sure that Pony came out in early in either the late '90s or early 2000s when I was in high school and was watching tons of MTV. Okay. Because so, I have very vivid and um, oddly specific 
memories of the music video. I think because it came on once while my grandmother was in the room and I was so embarrassed. Because as far as lyrical euphemism goes, I mean, he j it's like, it's not, it's like single entendre. It's not really double entendre. Okay. I think he asks, right, the lyrics are, if you're horny, let's do it. Jump on it. Ride it. I don't think that's what he's saying at all. I think he's saying, jump on it, my pony. Yeah, which is a, <laughs> right, so single entendre. Seems like maybe. Uh, okay, hold on, I gotta figure this out. Holland Tunnel. Yeah, he's in the season six finale of Parks and Recreation and another episode in series seven. Like Very place. slowly going through this easy pass. Um, this person is very slowly going through this easy pass. Uh, yeah, but it's like a show long joke. The Donna is fabulous and has a BMW and treats herself and her cousin is genuine. It's genuine. Alright. Um, but I forgot how good of a song Pony is. It's a great song. I think I maybe never knew how good of a song Pony is. That bass sound. Okay. Um So it was it's fun to I mean I, I think it's also become a little bit of a uh, theme because it's just been stuck in our heads. But we also played a Spotify game. Which was to listen to as many covers of Pony as possible. There's all different kinds. How do you think we did? We did okay. There's more. There's more. Yeah, we gave up because we, we went to see that giant golf ball. We did go see a giant. We we did go see a giant golf ball in the middle of our Pony Pony cover marathon. We probably listened to like five or six. Uh, all of which were pretty good. They're good. I mean, how can you really mess up a song like Pony? So this is the thing that I think is really interesting, that there are songs that are just great to cover. Yeah. And Pony is high on the list, I think. Pony's solid. I think Ignition is also a good it, cover song. I was just about to say, I think Ignition is maybe number one. Okay. I think Ignition might be... As, as, as much as I hate to continue giving credit and kudos to okay. R. Kelly... <laughs> Ignition is such a good song and is imminently coverable. Yes. We were even in a country bar in Nashville where, right. like, a moppy-haired dude with an acoustic guitar did such a good cover of Ignition, people came in off the street! Yeah. Um, what were the other songs that we listened to that we tried to find covers of? Um... Wicked Game by Chris Isaac. Yes. Which, most of those were bad. I don't remember the first one. It was, uh, we, there was a, um... I made, I made you, I made us listen to, um, bluegrass covers. It wasn't one song, but it was a number of songs. Oh, that's Covered right. in bluegrass, including a fantastic cover of Single Ladies. By the Cleverly by the Brothers? Cleverlies. Oh, the Cleverlies. I think that's what they're called. It's very, very good. What did you think about the bluegrass covers in general? Eh. Yeah? They're fine. What was it that, that made it eh? Not... Um, different enough. I think the thing I really like about cover songs is when, like, it's a totally, total, like, juxtaposition of, like, my expectation of what the song normally sounds like and a different genre of music. So that's why the Cleverly cover was so good was because so it was, good. it was dudes being like, if you liked it, then you should have put a ring on it. If you liked it, then you should have put a ring on it. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> and that's why, uh, like... Which way do it, I go? You go straight. Which way is straight? The way you're going. Yeah. Yes, there's cool. only two. Only one way to go. I don't know. If, well, you can go that way. It's just an up, under and over. Alright. Upper, upper and lower. I don't know if it makes a difference. No. Nope. Okay. Good to know. Uh, so that's why the Cleverly cover was so good, was because it was just so completely different. Yeah. That's why I like, like, there's a cover of um, You're the One That I Want from Greece. Okay. That's like really slow and, um, and like poppy. Yeah. That they keep playing. <laughs> of my yoga classes okay. <laughs> and every time it comes on like I kind of smile to myself and I'm like it's from Greece <laughs> um, but it sounds beautiful and it's just such an unexpected like new way to listen to it that I really like it so so we're I forget what some of the other covers that we listened to were that were bluegrass covers but was it is it I wonder if it's that most bluegrass covers 
are going to be made of rock and roll songs, which are already played with stringed inst- like guitars Maybe. and stuff, and so and sung by sung by people who are more like bluegrass musicians than like the difference between a bluegrass musician and a rock musician is going to be less than the difference between Beyonce, Beyonce and, and <laughs> yeah and like a guy who has a very thick accent and is a expert three finger like banjo a, picker like a like a middle aged white guy playing yeah a banjo it's totally different than Beyonce and it's unexpected yeah but it sounded great it it actually and I think that's one of the things that makes it a, makes a good cover is when you're like, whoa, Single Ladies is a bluegrass song. It is now. <laughs> it is now. I guess. That there's, there's something, there's like something in there the whole time that someone yeah. just needed to hear it slightly differently. Mm-hmm. And it turns out, it's like you get infernal secret knowledge of things that have been in front of you the whole time. Yeah, I think about it all the time because the only instrument I play is the ukulele badly. So I'm always looking for, <laughs> and I don't I don't listen to ukulele songs ever, besides the ones on Adventure Time. Right. So all I do is look for songs that I enjoy that I could try playing on the ukulele. So I also cannot wait to go home and try and play Pony on the ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the um, YouTube native cover of Pony, right? Yeah. I feel like the ukulele cover is definitely already. Well, and but but it's that's that's like a YouTube thing, the ukulele cover of something. I think that anything cover of everything is the eventuality, <laughs> right? It's about being first, and it's about being different. Right, the a- the, the internet... acapella cover, the yeah, yeah, the definitely. dubstep cover. It should definitely be in Pitch Perfect three. Yeah. If it's not in two already, if it is, then well, we've hit peak pony. Um, <laughs> it'd be great if it was. Is it in that? No, it's not in that sequence where they talk about like sex songs and they're doing like an acapella off or something. Pony? Yeah. I don't think so. I don't think it's in Pitch Perfect. I bet someone threw it out in the room and they were like, Pony. And they were like, Nope, too literal. Single entendre. (laughs) Um, Well, so now that we're about to enter into Manhattan uh, after going through the Holland Tunnel and I'm probably going to have to drive much more aggressively, maybe we should wrap up our conversation okay uh thank you molly for joining me even though you had no choice because you are stuck in the car with me that's quite all right you're very very gracious thank you for having me you gonna take this left uh i would love to take this left which left the left uh now there's no left here Take a right. 500 feet, keep left to continue on Holland Tunnel. You're gonna go to the My name is Mike Rugnetta, and this podcast has been Reasonably Sound. You can find Reasonably Sound on Instagram, at ReasonablySND, but as a lot of people have been pointing out lately, it has become a bit of a barren wasteland, and there's a reason for that. I had this great idea when Reasonably Sound started that I would do Instagram alongs of episodes uh, with supporting visual material and additional information, and it became a bit of a thing that I dreaded, and I don't like dreading things. I like to do stuff that I find really exciting. And so I haven't done it since I think the third or fourth episode, so a while ago, and I have yet to figure out what the Reasonably Sound Instagram is for after sort of getting over the idea of doing Instagram alongs. And so I keep mentioning it at the end of every episode, and I know I haven't used it in a while, so... I'm going to put this question to you guys. If the Reasonably Sound Instagram had a use, what would it be? What would you like it to be? And Instagram along is absolutely a perfectly acceptable answer. If you think I should go back to doing that kind of thing, then I will do my best to figure out a way to do it in such a way that does not cause me 
anxiety. I don't know. Some doesn't cause me something. Cause me whatever it is that caused me to stop doing it. But yeah, I would love to know what you guys would like to see from the Reasonably Sound Instagram. You can also find Reasonably Sound on Twitter at reasonably s n d and you can find me mike rugnetta on pretty much all of the things at mike rugnetta m i k e r u g n e t t a two lanes to turn left onto the canal street ramp then continue on light street head southeast toward erickson place merge onto erickson place then continue straight onto beach street just look the lines for bridge line Let's do it. In Riding my pony, my saddles, waiting. So weird driving here. Coming. Jump on it. I'm gonna take a. I'm gonna take a right, right? Um, not yet. You're gonna go up to Grand Street. <laughs>